Okay, girls. So we have to study today about virus. Okay, first of all, this uh, this topic is uh, so much into everywhere today that mostly you know about it and we have discussed even before. But as it is part of this lesson, I'm going to repeat everything once more and you will listen to it. Okay. As yesterday, I have, a, I have asked you a question, whether virus is a living thing or a non-living thing. And what did you say me? Viruses are non living things. They are? Non-living things. Non-living things. Non yes, Yavatim, they are non-living things. But when they enter into a living thing as a host, they enter into living thing, bod living body as a host, and then it start growing. Then it lives, okay? But actually a virus is a non-living thing. A virus is a microscopic particle that cannot replicate on its own. The particle that cannot become double on its own. It either get inside a cell or inject in a cell with its DNA, often destroying the cell. Many viruses cause diseases such as common cold, flu, acquired AIDS, people, plants, animals, prokaryotes can all be infected by viruses. Every single thing can be infected by viruses, girls. Not only people, even plants, animals, even the single cell bacteria. So the genetic material can be either DNA or RNA. They are made up of a protein. Viruses are nothing but they are made of protein coats and a genetic material. The genetic material can either be RNA or DNA. That protein cover gives a shape to the, like you know what shape they have given to our coronavirus. Did you see a ball with all that? Yeah. And they say it's, it has something like a crown. That's why it's called as corona. Most viruses are smaller than the smallest bacteria. They are even smaller than bacteria. About 5 billion virus particles could fit in a single drop of blood. Oh my God, imagine girls. <laughs> single drop of blood. About 5 billion virus particles could fit in. Oh my God. It's like, it's, we cannot even imagine a drop of blood having 5 million particles of virus. Are virus living? Of course they are not. All living things are made up of cells that contains genetic material, protein. Normally, every living thing contains this protein coat and genetic material and simple, even virus contain all this, but it is not. Like living things, virus contain genetic material and protein. But unlike living things, they do not perform any function. They don't have any life function, girls. They do not use energy from the nutrients. They do not maintain homeostasis. They cannot grow by its own. They do not respond to stimuli such as light, sound, or touch, nothing. They cannot function on its own. They can only replicate. They can only get double inside a cell it infects. As a result, that's the reason viruses are considered as non-living. Now, you probably know someone who has had flu, but did you know that many different influenza viruses cause the flu? Most of these viruses are not very harmful and healthy people usually recover quickly from the flu. Sometimes, however, a new influenza virus develops that causes serious illness. See, when they wrote this book or when they did this book, they did not say us about coronavirus. But we know that new virus, it is developed that causes serious illness, even the death of a person. And that's the reason we are at home. We are not coming to school. A flu pandemic occurs when a new flu virus spreads to many people around the world. They say in 1917, girls, uh, if, if, we, if we can find, I will even show you the video. Starting in June of 1917, 
a particularly deadly strain of flu virus began spreading around the world. Even that time, girls, 1917, people used to be like that, locked down, home. And they say that it took, it took so many years. It took so many years to recover. By the end of 1919, the flu had killed more than 50 million people, girls. So what's happening today? And a lot. This book was not made for us to know, to compare the coronavirus, but see how we are comparing now. More than 500 million have been infected by a 1918 flu. It was one of the worst epidemics in the human history. And of course, the second is the corona, girls. Scientists. Which is the first one? They say it was in 1917. They did not say the name of it. It was called, what? they gave it as 1918 flu. They used to call it as 1918 flu. Why, what does the flu did to you in that song? Again, it was deadly like Corona. People died. Same. Is it harmful or Flu like and cold is same symptoms. You know, cold, cough, and all the symptoms are same. But that is deadly. Deadly means the person can die. And that spread very quickly in 1917. And scientists are still working to understand what made the strain of flu so deadly. Anyways, now all the scientists are working just for corona, nothing else. Modern threats, new strains of flu viruses are constantly developing. Scientists monitor outbreaks of new strains closely. The virus that caused the outbreak is studied so that vaccines can be made. They said that the vaccines have been made, but girls, do you still think that these vaccines, what, do you, what is your opinion? Tell me about it. What is your opinion? Do you think this vaccine has, has evacuated or erased coronavirus? I don't think so. Still not, right? You can uh, know the cases and people are dying and this is happening. In 2009, we had swine flu, H1N1. You remember? Um, no. You know about it, 2009, when you were small? Uh, we wasn't small, but we didn't hear about it. Because 2009, you were, of course, small, 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, I thought it was 2019. 2009. No, I yeah, we were small. Uh, I was working in a hospital here in Suleiman Faki. I remember the, it was like, it took around one year, not much, but there was nothing like things were closed or no, 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 nothing like that. So it's uh, the, in the 2009, it was harmful or also? It was harmful, yes. The people were dying, but maybe within three to four months, they found the vaccine in Spain and they used to send from there. But I remember the cases in my hospital that people were dying and they were isolated. The nurse, the nurse never came out. She used to directly go to her uh, house from the, you know, from a specific way. Nobody, nobody met her and all that used to happen in 2009. I was working. And that. like uh, when you was going like to malls and you was wearing Everything masks. was okay. Everything was okay. It did not go to this extent. Maybe within three months, the vaccine was there, dear. So there is nothing. Uh, let us just, you know, let us just explore about. In 1918, a new and unusually deadly influenza virus swept the globe in a pandemic that we are still studying today. The 1918 pandemic caused the global deaths of probably 50 and maybe up to well, 100 million people, making it the worst natural disaster in all of recorded human history. But what made the pandemic so lethal? NIAID's Dr. Jeffrey Taubenberger has been studying the 1918 flu for decades. Most people who had influenza in 1918 had a completely typical course of influenza, like you would see today. Uh, but in 1918, a really unusually high number of people ended up having very severe illness. 
meaning that they actually developed a pneumonia, an infection of their lungs, that started out as a viral pneumonia and then rapidly progressed in most cases to secondary bacterial pneumonia. They had no way to treat the viral infection, they had no way to treat the secondary bacterial infections, so these people were just really left, in a sense, to suffer. And this process, from initial onset of infection to death by bacterial pneumonias, usually took around 10 or 11 days. Ordinarily, influenza is most deadly in the very young and the very old. But as Dr. David Morins explains, the 1918 virus was unusual. The, the, thing, the two things that were different in 1918, the deaths in all those age groups were more than they had been in other pandemics that we had seen, and that there was a very high rate of death in people between the ages of 20 and 40, which had never been seen before and which had never been seen since. To find out why the virus was so lethal, Dr. Taubenberger and other scientists retrieved samples of lung tissue preserved in paraffin from soldiers that had died of the flu. Eventually, with the help of tissue recovered from frozen bodies in Alaska, Dr. Taubenberger's team was able to reconstruct the 1918 flu virus. Unfortunately, when you look at the genome of the virus and just compare it on paper to other influenza viruses, nothing obvious really pops out at you as to why it would behave this way. And yet we know that this virus is a really virulent path and pathogenic virus. In one of the things the 1918 virus did, uh, it does in experimental animal models, and there's data to say that that's what happened in people, is that it induced a really strong and very unusual kind of inflammatory response. So that the body's response, immune response to the virus itself, contributed heavily to lung damage and pathology, and probably contributed to serious illness and death. So it's this very unusual inflammatory response that's one of the key uh, active research focuses of my laboratory to understand why the 1918 virus induced that and what perhaps we could do in the future uh, to try to develop drugs that might target or limit aspects of the inflammatory response as a way of treating severe viral infections. Okay, that was a Spanish flu. Maybe uh, it took much in the Spain. <coughs> and then this is about the... But again, they say that Corona is more deadly than all those in history. That was echoed in nearly every place in the country. We help the Surgeon the General mask, said, right? if proper they precautions are taken, you have no cause for alarm. In other words, they did nothing and they lied to the public. Your book describes uh, a, a tragedy of unbelievable scale in the United States alone. 675,000 people died, which is comparable to about a million point seven. This is in 1918. What are we facing now? How does this resonate with you? This, this, your history of 1918 must play in your head all the time as you're watching television, as you're thinking about what's going on. Uh, a little bit too much, uh, right? <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're both respiratory viruses, obviously. Fortunately, this virus is I think considerably less lethal than 1918. Unfortunately, this virus is much more contagious than 1918. So even with the lower fatality rate, uh, which we're still not sure exactly what it is, uh, but it does clearly seem to be lower than 1918. Um, even with that lower fatality rate, because more people are going to be infected, we're still facing. It's lower fatality rate it means people that compare to 1918, they are. They did not die so many now, but because of the high technology, we are trying to save people. But still, I feel that it is like they just said that it took one year, but 
if Corona is not taking one year, it has taken more than one year now. Like March 8, I think you all came to the school last day, right? March 8. It will be almost. Yeah, yeah. and it was in Monday. Yeah, see, you all even remember the day. This is the phase of your life which you will never forget. Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't took the, the religion quiz. One of the most chilling moments in your book about 1918 comes when you compare Philadelphia to St. Louis. What happened there? Philadelphia was one of the first hit it, cities hit. They, again, echoed the line that the national government was uh, putting out there. They had a huge Liberty Loan Parade scheduled. Virtually everyone in the public health community and the medical community wanted that canceled, except the public health commissioner. He was part of the political machine, had no backbone. So the uh, parade went forward. And just like clockwork, uh, roughly 48 hours later, the disease exploded in Philadelphia. It ended up with about 14,500 deaths, if my memory serves. About two thirds of them died. In a 14, See, this 15. time, like, you know, the government is helping us out. They are with us when, yani, during the lockdown, all the commissioners, they are saying, okay, let it be lockdown, let it be, they don't, like, you know, now when um, when it happened in London and UK, they, they did not celebrate it Christmas as they, but that's what this author is saying, that it happened, that they did not support it. And finally, there was a parade, which has, they have shown you here in the picture, and they told us that people died. You see how they gathered during the yeah. pandemic, they gathered and immediately after two to 48 hours, he said, maybe so many died. And that was in Philadelphia. Ended up with about 14,500 14, deaths. deaths. Serves. About two thirds of them died in a 14, 15 week period beginning in late September, 1918. St. Louis imposed all sorts of social distancing measures early. And, and then they and had, had a much the, better the thinking in, in lockdown. depression would lead to all kinds of horrible okay, guys, public health your, consequences. Your class is over. We will continue tomorrow. I hope it was interesting for you. Yeah. Have a nice day.